Let's talk about electric cars. One of the most common questions I get on my channel is, why do you still have a transmission on your electric car? And so today I thought that it would be a good subject to talk about. All right, so today's video is dedicated to Toby Ismili. I hope that's how you pronounce your name. Toby uh, asked a few days about the transmission thing. Here's his uh, comment. He says, I am planning on converting a Land Rover Series 2 LWV to electric. So would it be better to put the motor on the gearbox or to put the motor straight to the diff like you did on the Jeep? And then he gives details about the car. The car weighs 32.94 pounds. The diff ratio is 4.7 to 1. The tire diameter is 28 inches. Uh, and I would like to get uh, upwards of 100 miles of range using Tesla Model S batteries. And of course, he gives all those details because I went and asked him about that stuff, right? A lot of the times people ask me, like, what is better, this and that? And I go, well, it all depends on the car. It all depends on the tire size. It all depends on the weight. It all depends on your very specific application. So now we have all of the info here to guess as to what would be better. So let's attack this question but before that look at what i got here guys Ooh. this is a mini prime okay so mini prime is just the lens for this camera right it's similar to the lens that you're watching me through here right except for one uh difference these are cinema style lenses which are made to higher standards you know the the glass are you know higher quality usually and then the, the the physical form is actually standardized so that when you change them you don't have to change a bunch of things into your uh, camera kit right these lenses are typically used in production right so they're much more expensive and higher quality and believe it or not you know hollywood uses these little cameras like the one that you that i'm using here a gh4 the gh5 there's a bunch of these little sony's and stuff and so they use them in tight spaces like if they're shooting a scene where they're you know driving around and there's not a room for a full-size camera um they use them uh in places where the camera might actually be damaged so you know this is a two thousand dollar camera they want it uh, if something happens to the camera it's better for a two thousand dollar camera than a you know two hundred thousand dollar camera right so that's what these lenses are for and vedra here uh, I have been nice enough to let me borrow some so that I can play with them. And so I want to try it out here and, and I want you guys to tell me if you guys like the image. So let's change this lens. All right, these lenses are completely manual. So uh, am I in focus there? I think I'm in focus there. Ooh, look at that. All right. So this is the lens that I re uh, took out and that it's all plastic and stuff that's all made out of aluminum it should be pretty nice so the problem is of course that i'm gonna have to stay in one place they're a little bit more challenging to work with but the image should be a lot better all right with that all set up let's deal with our question here okay he's asking should he use his car without a transmission or with the transmission so let's see what would determine if that which way is better so a lot of people think that this tra the transmission is this thing that wastes a lot of energy that this this really inefficient thing right that's in the car and I would say that m maybe if the transmission is automatic yeah it's gonna use and it's gonna waste more energy because it's got that whole slip thing on the so yeah I would say if you have a automatic transmission, it would be worth to look into removing it and doing away with it, right? But in the case of manual transmissions, if I had to estimate, I'd say you probably sacrifice one or two horsepower, right? These are fairly efficient devices and there's a lot of benefits to giving up those few horsepower, right? Um, it, you know, it allows you to use the torque that your motor could put out um, and use the peak torque. I pretty much you know, mostly most of the range of speeds that your car is going to do. So, um, yeah, when it comes to being inefficient and removing from the car, uh, transmission is usually not that, you know. Most of the times the things that we think are wasteful and are robbing the car energy 
are not really the things that actually do, right? Like this video right here. These guys tested the fan. You know that fan that is meant to cool the radiator? Up to 30 horsepower. 30 horsepower was what used to drive the, one of these back in the day. Now imagine it's burning that much power just to move air to cool the water so that then it cools the engine block. That is an incredible wasteful system. But luckily you're looking into going electric, which is a much, much better system and more efficient system, right? So should you leave the transmission or should you remove it? There are pros and cons, right? And in this case, you have chosen to use the AC75, right? Which is a motor that is typically designed for cars that are three to 5,000 pounds. So I think you're good there, right? But you'll also have to keep in mind that you are going to add batteries to that car, right? And if it weighs 32.94 right now, uh, well, adding another 700 pounds is gonna put that, you know, somewhere around, you know, almost 4,000 pounds. So you, I think you're still within the limits of that motor. So let's see if we can figure out how well that will perform straight to the differential. All right, searching the internet, I found this advanced electric calculator. It has four fields and it lets you popular three and then it'll give you the fourth one, right? Look, we have the differential ratio, right? So we put that in here, 4.7. And then we have the tire size, which is 28. So here, enter tire diameter inches. Okay, this graph right here, this is the AC75 graph, right? And it goes from zero to about 6,000, but you see the important thing is to check is the torque. It starts with high torque, right? 183 uh, pound feet of torque, which is pretty impressive. Um, that should be able to move your car really good, but it only goes up to about 2,400 RPMs, at which point then it hits a knee and then it just starts going downhill. So the faster you are, the more, the higher your RPMs start going, the lower the torque. And it starts dropping actually quite fast. And so I would say that you don't want to get past 5,000 RPMs because at 5,000 RPMs, I mean, it's like at 50 pound feet of torque, right? So, so I'd say 5,000. If you put 5,000 here, enter the motor RPMs, then... You compute the speed, and then it gives you a top speed at 5,000 RPMs of 88.7, which I think no one needs to be going more than 88 miles per hour unless you're doing like a race car or whatever. So I say that you probably can use this motor straight to the differential. Okay, so just for fun, let's see here. Uh, 24. 400 rpms right about 2400 rpms that's when you hit the knee that's where you have 168 pound feet so around 200 no 2400 rpms no okay 2400 rpms then what you want is to compute the speed so you will hit a knee around 42 miles an hour. So basically from zero to 40 miles an hour, you'd have the most amount of torque that this motor can give you. And then after you hit 40, it'll start dropping, which, yeah, I think most cars need most of the torque from zero to 40 miles an hour. Once you're doing 40, you know, uh, yeah, you need you don't need all that torque to get going because you're already going. So, yeah, I think you would get some decent performance. You know, don't expect, you know, race car performance off of this motor. Um, you would do much better, I think. If you wanted higher performance, you would do much better by putting a uh, or, or keeping your manual transmission on there or installing a manual transmission. Even a two-speed uh, gearbox, you know, like a... You know, EV West uses the power glide or whatever, which is just a low and high gear. And what that does is basically lets you do exactly this. Use the, the 2400 RPMs from 0 to 40, and then you shift to the upper gear, and then you use uh, 20, up to 2400 RPMs to go from 40 to 80. And so you use 
uh, the part of the RPM range where the motor is most powerful. All right. I hope this helps you figure out if you can do away with your transmission and your DIY uh, electric conversion project, right? I want to thank Vedra for letting me play with their lenses today. I also want to thank um, Echo Binary LLC. This is the eBay seller that sold us all these cells for a dollar. Um, they were so gracious enough to send me two of these boxes with a hundred cells each which I have decided to give away to one of you guys. As always, with these giveaways, all you have to do is be subscribed. You have to like, share, and comment if you want. But sharing, I think, is probably the most important because then that exposes this video to more people, which then more people like probably subscribe to my channel and then that just, you know, that helps me a lot. So if you need some batteries, uh, here's your chance. Uh, thank you to all my uh, patrons. Uh, don't forget to check my Patreon page. Um, we'll see you in the next video. Bye. All right, guys, this is my bus. It has Tesla batteries that I installed there. Some of them three years ago, some of them three months ago. I'm going to check how well balanced they are. I just charged it last night, so it's fully charged at the top. And I want to see where the cells are at. Let's check it.